Hi, and uh, welcome to this uh, video tutorial on the basics of making a map using GIS. My name is Esben Holmes. I am from the Department of People and Technology at Oslo University in Denmark. So um, let's get started. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to take you through the process of coming from nothing to being able to produce a map like this one. So um, this one is a relatively traditional map. It has what we call two map frames, one of Europe and one of the world, different scales, different projections. So different ways of making the round or flat. We have a legend where been made some modifications to it. There's some base text and there's a title. So these components are typical of what you will find in most maps. Furthermore, the colors on the in of the countries is given by the GDP per capita. So um, it's a calculated value. And um, also that I've been given, uh, given the background countries, a country or color. So different things that you will find in many different maps. Um, if you look at the general process, of what is it? How do we make a map? So out of here, we have our final map of a map frame and another map frame and some scale bars and legends. So that's the output. As input, we'll load some data and we'll do some things um, to that data. You can see that there's two parallel processes. So one for each of our map frames um, and they more or less follow the same uh, workflow. So we load some data. If needed, we'll filter it. So get rid of something we don't want. We might want to do a transformation of data. In our case, we um, calculate it from the GDP. We calculate the GDP per person. So we'll do a transformation there. We'll do a simplization. So give them colors according to what values we want to work with. And finally, we will arrange our map frames. We will decide which projections to use in them, which zoom we want to work with at an extent, if we want grids on them, if which layers should be on top of each other, things like that. Um, as I say, this is a absolute overview uh, video. I'll have videos for more or less all of these processes, some of them even more than one video. So um, this one will just give you the idea and my idea is that try and follow along. Um, it's made so that you can download the software and you can download the data. And um, you'll probably learn the most if you just try and follow along, do something, maybe work for another area than Europe, depending on what you want. So this is the process. But before the process in the GIS can start, there's a process before that, namely acquiring the data. So how can we get hold of the data we want to work with? In uh, this case, We'll be working with a data set called Natural Earth. I'll be using this data set in, um, in several videos. Um, so it might be a good idea to download it. It's a relatively large data set of 260 megabytes, but it covers the whole of the world. So you can work wherever you want. You don't have to work for Europe as I'll be doing. Um, the link is here. Um, it will also be in the, in the description underneath the video. And once you go to uh, the website, there is this download geo package function that you can choose. So you um, go to the website and then you um, choose this download geo package. It will download a file to your computer. In my case, I have downloaded it to my download folders. Um, so here I have already downloaded and um, I've got it, this is the content of the file you download. It has a little readme which just says go and read the website. It has a version number so you can see which version of the software or the data you've downloaded. And then there's this folder packages. And in this one, there's this, this one package, this GPKG, the geo package. It's a data for, format, it's a, a on disk database. So it contains lots of data and can be used in both QGIS and ArcGIS. So if you choose this one, we can copy it and you can then move it to somewhere else. I just made a, a, a folder in my download folder for GIS data and I'll just paste it there. You'll probably paste it somewhere else, but that's just for this video. It's nice to have it there. So now I've got the data. Now what I really need to do is I also need to get the software. So QGIS, you can go to um, their website here and you can go and say download. If um, 
you're working with Windows, you've got some options. Um, if you um, just want to work with QGIS and not lots of other open source uh, software and uh, don't want to have it updated in strange manners, um, go for this um, standalone installation. You'll probably need the 64-bit. Most computers nowadays are 64-bit. There are some that have different reasons are running a 32-bit. You can, if this one doesn't work, try that one. If you are into a bit more nerdy things, you can um, download this one and it gives you many more um, elements to choose from. Um, if you're on the Mac, um, there's just one file to download. I guess, it, uh, well, there's two really. There's this long time and there is the latest stable version. I absolutely recommend just taking the latest stable version. Uh, the long term is mainly for organizations that don't want to update the software every month for two months or depending on what QGIS's update circle uh, is. So um, download one of those and, um, and get started. So once you've got all of this, you will have, if it's in a Windows, you will have a, a start thing called uh, QGIS um somewhere down here uh boom boom boom, boom. that was a bit far QGIS so here we have a QGIS folder <coughs> and here we have a um, different thing what we're needing is the desktop and you might be interested in using the desktop with um grass it may be work with uh, raster data more advanced analysis we won't be using that in this lecture they are exactly the same this just has a wee bit more in it if you choose that one so if we just check this standard desktop um, I've dragged it to my start up here so you can just choose it and start it the first time you start it it will come up and I say hey, welcome and let's get started things like that and create some settings I have started this one before um, because when it starts the first time it's installed it in Danish and maybe um, you don't want to read the Danish menus and I don't like Danish menus so I, I have this one in set up to English so the only difference from the basic start to this one I've got here is that I've changed the language of the menus. So that's the only difference. So the idea of QGIS is that we have a browser window, we have a layers window where we have the different layers that we work with. So if you remember back to our um, slide here, we have these concepts of layers. So the, that go into each of these things becomes a layer. So we have our layers down here is once we start working and over here, if we have had projects already, this will be our recent projects. And as soon as we start working, it will be our Mac display area. So in my case, I stored my day. I should say all of this can be configured. I have a video on configuring um, the basic up start of uh, QGIS mod windows you have and why. Um, if you lose your windows or anything, you can also right click out here in the white space of a, a uh, menu and you can then choose so the browser panel if that goes away you can choose that here so but let's set this start in our download folder and in our download folder we had this geodata folder and in here we had our world national world database and here we have lots of files um, they're all called ng for natural earth and then there's 10 million so they are data that are appropriate for working at a scale of 10 million that's the most detailed of natural earth's data there's a ng uh, 110 million so that's the coarsest of them so made to work at a scale of 1 to uh, 10 million and then there's the intermediate one which is a 1 to uh, 50 million so depending on which scale you want to make your map you choose um, the data set that matches. You might say, hey, why not use um, the most detailed one? Well, basically, if you have a whole map of the Earth and you have lots of small islands, they just become black dots and don't look nice on the map at all. So don't just be greedy and say, I want the most detailed. Think about which scale you're going to produce your map on and choose a data set that matches that scale. So if I want to make a, a on my map from um, this exercise here, I want to start out with this data frame down here, the whole of the world. So that will be a very coarse data set. So I'll go for the one to 110 million. And I need some layers. I'll need some countries. I'll just drag them into this area here, which is, becomes a map area. And I want to have some background. So for that, I will choose uh, the oceans. 
Uh, where do I have oceans? There. Okay, so now I've got two layers down here. In this case, it doesn't matter which one is on top of it, which because there's no, there's no overlap between countries and oceans in this data set. So um, don't need to change the order around. I could do this by just dragging them. So now I have ocean underneath, but no change here in this case. I can now want to say, okay, I want to um, go through my process of, um, of the data and say, do I need any filtering? Is there anything I want to remove from the data set? In this case, no, I want to keep all of the data there. So I don't do any filtering. Then I can do the transformation. I can do the transformation as a step by itself. Or if it's a simple transformation, as in this case, I can do it as part of the simplification process. And that's what I'll be doing now. So in this case, I will take my countries and I'll right click on it and I will choose its properties. That brings up a list of things I can do with my layers. Okay. In this case, I might just maybe I should show this first. Um, to understand if you haven't worked with geodata before, what the idea is. So in a data set like this, we have a, um, I just use this zoom function here. So um, if I zoom in on Egypt here, we can see that it really is consists of a series of straight lines. So there's a geometry that is defined by line segments. That's why it's called vector data, because these line segments are vectors. Associated with this geometry is some properties or attributes, as we normally call them. If I use this little eye tool here and make sure that my country layer is selected, so that's the active layer I'm going to ask a question to. And I can now click on this geometry here. And it will then say, OK, I have some derived attributes. They are derived from the geometry, such as area and center point and so on. And there are some other attributes which gives the country of the name of this polygon here, in this, in this case, Egypt. It will give me the data I'm interested in here, namely the population estimate and the gross GDP um, in a million of dollars estimated. And the year of the population was 2017 and the GDP year was 2016. Well, it's always how is this data arrived and it's, there can be some discussions there. And then especially for this data set, there's lots of different coding systems related. So if you want to combine this with other data, there's lots of possibilities to do that through these extra attributes down here that just basically are codes. So we have a geometry, now colored red, and that geometry has associated with different properties or attributes as we normally call them. So I'll use those two attributes GDP and population to do my mapping. First of all, I just want to zoom out to the whole of the world. I can do that easily by right clicking on the layer and choosing zoom to layer, then it will zoom completely out. If I want to get rid of that red that indicates I've used the eye tool, I just click somewhere when there's nothing and it will disappear. So I can go in and I can say properties and I can choose this one symbology. So that decides on how the symbols are associated with the, the, the geometry, how it's colored in this case. At the moment, everything has the same single symbol, namely this gray color. Up here, I can choose. In this case, I want to have it as a gradiated color. And I would want to have them as, I might just start with, um, I can start saying G. Um, well, I can scroll down so I find my GDP. Uh, GDP in millions of dollars estimated. So if I um, choose this one and don't do anything, leave this as is with natural, sorry, equal intervals and say classify. What it will do is that it has, will now create five classes of the same interval, the same width of the interval for each of these classes um, for this data set. I can um, say uh, apply and you will see that the map is not really that interesting. We have very red China, very red United States, a semi-red India and Japan, and then the rest is more or less white. So this is not, so we had China and, and USA up in the east, and then we had more or less the rest of the world up in here. We can see this distribution if I go into my histograms, 
and say load data. Here, you can now see here, this is what's called a frequency diagram. So in, down here we have 104 countries and then we have some individual countries up there. So that's not really a very efficient way of um, displaying your data. Or the, you can't convey that much information. It's good to say, oh, there are some really extremes and then the rest are on the other end. Um, another classification we might choose, therefore, is to change this to uh, quartiles equal count. So um, if I choose this, I now have five intervals here. So each interval will represent 20% of the countries of the world. Um, so if I say apply now, we can see that we have these coloring. So each now there are the same number of countries in each color interval. Um, again, if I look at the histogram, we can see that we have lots of intervals down here and then a really wide interval for all of the large ones. So um, it, it conveys more information in the map. In this case, well, it's very much to do with the population of the country. Um, so what I would like to do is instead of just showing the GDP, I would like to show the GDP per capita. So in this case, I want to do a transformation of my data. So I go from GDP to GDP per capita. I'm going to do a calculation by pressing this up here, this um, small sigma, um, and say divided by, I can choose the symbol up there. And over here, I can type population. And you can see it goes down into this fields and values, and it then finds this population estimate to me. Um, I double click that, and you can see it will do a calculation over here. Uh, we see that these are going to be really small numbers. It might, because they will be in millions per person. That probably won't be so relevant. So we might want to change this to dollars per person. So if we do that by multiplying uh, with one million. So now we can see, as long as it shows a result down here, my calculation is right. Okay, so this is a quick check of have I done anything wrong here. So I'm fine with this. I can say okay. Go back to my classifier. It's now important that I press classify again so it updates the intervals, otherwise the map would be really weird. So now it's updated the intervals. And I can say apply. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. So now we can see, strangely enough, um, countries like or areas as Antarctica has a very high GDP per capita. I will um, leave that for someone else's discussion of how that can be. Um, I will also say, okay, I might want more classes. I might want, let's say, 10 classes. So each class is 10% of the countries. And I might also want to change this so it doesn't have just a red, but I want to use a spectrum which goes from red to blue. So red will be countries with a low GDP per capita and blue will be countries with a high GDP. Um, let me just look right. So now this begins to look like what I wanted. So I can disclose it, my dialog, and see so that's fine. Um, and I now need to um, decide on my symbology for the water. This time it's somewhat easier because I can just go here, or right click on it and use this style and go directly to a style wheel and say this is going to be a, a bluish color and I will probably want it a bit lighter. So something like this um, doesn't conflict with any of the colors in my, in my scale. So, good. I've now made my first data frame. In, um, next step is to um, tell QGIS that this is going to be a layers connected. In QGIS this is called a theme and it's this little eye here. So I can now say add theme. And I've now defined a theme that says when I go to the world theme I will see these two layers together. This is because I now want to add a new theme, namely the one I'm going to use for Europe. That for Europe I want to use a more detailed data set. So I'll go up and take the one to uh, uh, 10 million. And I want to have uh, my countries. So admin, uh, I do have admin, 
Dikit, 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 dikit. There are admin countries. So I can bring this one into my map. You might see that then some small islands appeared. And then I also want uh, the one to 10 oceans. So that's there. So I also wanted these oceans here. So I'll just drag ocean land. So, I've, and that's because the, co the coastline is not exactly the same in the one to 100 or 10 million and to 10 million. So I need to have the ocean that associated with it. I will now turn off my uh, one to one million. And now I'll just have these layers. Well, I would like them to look the same as my two other layers. So what I can do here is I can right click on it and in style, go in and say copy style and an all style components and then go to my ocean and go style, paste style, all style components. So now it is exactly the same styling and I'll do the same for the countries. So I can go style, copy style, all style components and go to my new one, say style, paste style, all style components. So now it has the same intervals and so on as my other data set. So now I have got two and what I really want to do now is I just want to and make a new theme that I'll call EU. <clears throat> Good. But I only want the EU countries shown. So in this case, I want to do a filtering. Um, so in, uh, so we have looked through this, we have done the transformation, but I want to do a filtering to show you the EU countries. Um, I have a list of EU countries and their abbreviation. So um, I'll just uh, copy this list here. So if I want to filter, I choose the layer I want to filter and choose the filter value here. So right click filter. In this case, these codes I have, they were for World Bank. So these are these World Bank A2 coding. So I say, World Bank A2 coding. In this case, I want to say use the in operator. This is a query language called SQL. I have a whole video on it. So this is a little special way of doing it, but it's very common with working with GIS, mainly because you want to map quite a lot of areas. So I make brackets. I paste my um, abbreviations in, sim because it will separate by commas. And um, I can do a test. I press the test and it will return that I have 28 countries. Um, I have Great Britain at the moment, we will see. Um, and I can close it and say fine. And you will now see that we now have only the EU countries displayed um, on our screen. Finally, I want to um, zoom in on EU, so I can go and say zoom to layer. And that will then zoom in, we have of course a little African little guy out here. Um, we will uh, both ignore that and some of those Atlantic islands and just zoom in to this part of Europe. Um, what I want to do further is I want to put a label on my, um, my countries. So in order to do that, I will um, go again go to properties and then I'll go to my labels. At the moment it says no labels, I want a single label. And again here we have this little sigma, so I can do a calculation. So I want to label them with the GDP per person. So um, in this case, but I wanted, I don't want a decimal value, so I'll just say I wanted rounded first. So I'll just type round. You can see it said ask me for a value and then a number of decimal places. Um, I'll just say zero in a moment. So now I want so I want the country, the values, GDP and population. So I go under this fields and uh, values and I can find them down here. Or I can, as I did before, which is easier, just type GDP and have this one. Again, I want to multiply it with a million. And then I wanted to divide all of this. Well, again, it's easier to just say pop. Oh, not like that population estimate 
and have a comma. And now it says how many places you can see this will help. And I want zero and I want to close that off. And again here, we can see that I've done something right because I have a value down here. Now, the only thing I want to do is I want to change how they are placed. So I want to have them horizontal and maybe because I have so many black lines, I might just add a little buffer around them uh, of, I don't like it to fall, just go down to a half line. Okay, so now I will have black text with a little white halo around them. I can say apply and see this effect here. So I now have um, label my countries. So I, I now have my two different um, of these themes. So I have a EU theme, which is the one I'm seeing. I might just make sure it's updated. Now I've made some changes. So I just say update my EU theme. So I'm quite sure that it is what I'm seeing on the screen. And if I go to my world theme, you'll see it changes. You can see the more coarse data set. So I have these two elements here. I can switch between. So now I've made my two, what's going to be map frames in my map. So the only thing I now need to do is I now need to go in and create, compose my map. I do this by going to the file menu, sorry, the project menu and saying new print layout, call it uh, GDP world. Brings me up this piece of paper. Um, if I right click on it and say page properties, I can change the size. So this is a four landscape. That's fine with me. If you want anything else, you can change that there. Then I can insert things. This um, map roll here is um, the one I use to draw where I want my map. So I might just start by uh, placing a uh, map on my um, on, on, on my um, on map frame here. Over here, if I um, just move this a bit, uh, how can I do that? Oh, maybe I just have to move out. You can see here it says that um, follow map frame, and I'll say this one should be the world. Like that. Um, I can say that it has to be in our project. Maybe I'll just um, I can zoom out by um, if I'm really careful. I can use this tool, and then I can use my scroll button. So something like that, just to have a, a rough scale. Um, and then I can choose which projection I want. Let's see if I just get out of here, yeah, this one. So which projection do I want to use? Um, I would like to use a wrinkle. And I like to use uh, the one that's called triple. So this one down here, world triple. So the problem with this one, which by default is Mercator, is that it's really distorting the area of, of countries around the crater compared to those at the poles. So there's a video on projections where we can go much further into that. But this one is much nicer. It's a good compromise of different things. So I like to use this one for global maps. So, um, finish with the world, and then I want to do the same for EU. Um, there are some slight uh, tricks you have to be aware of here. Note that I have now have ocean underneath um, the landmass, and that's because we're going to do some changing of projections. And, um, and this data set sometimes goes horribly wrong when doing this. So make sure that you have oceans underneath your countries before doing this. So I can now drag in my a new data frame for you. And like before, I can go over and uh, choose my projection. In this case, I will um, choose the European. Um, there's many of these European. Um, I like to use this um, Lambert Esimutal equal area, which is um, common for uh, um, EU projects. So I'll use this one. And um, so now we, we have this standard projection that we use in Europe. I might just change the scale to, oops, that was not really useful. Uh, let's see, I've got, did I get 35 minutes? A uh, bit, bit, watch that. So, um, 
Good. I want to check move the content inside the frame. So I choose this blue one here and I can now move the content. So I got a reasonable content inside my, um, my map. So I got my two map frames placed um, and I want to make a legend. A legend is made not in the composer, but in the standard QGIS if you wish. So let's click out here. Um, doesn't matter which one we really use. Um, I'll take this one down here and I will um, look at how its um, legend is formatted because before we only change the colors, what I want to do now is I want also to change how these texts are written. If you look up in here, the legend format, what I can do here is I can write from to and USD. Okay, so now they will all have this format from now not to your, your United States dollars. So done that, I can go back to my layout here and um, I can insert a layout, or oh, sorry, a, um, a legend down here. It will, um, first of all, we can see down here, it has a series of um, layers already there. I now need to deselect this auto update and get out of the way here. And then I want to get rid of the layers that don't you. Oh, I can make sure that this one references map. Which one is map two? It's, uh, I think that's right. Uh, let's see, what does it say? Uh, where did my layer? Oh, sorry. Um, so that's map what So that's map two. So I wanted. So what I've been doing here is I've been fooling around, but what I really want to do is that I want to um, make sure that my legend follows map one. So going back to my legend, make sure that this one follows map one. So let's start on that one down there. And I can now get rid of um, this, get rid of, move me a bit. So I'll get rid of that layer by pressing the minus. So I only want those coarse ones. That's the one I changed the name on. Um, I really don't want the oceans either. I might want to give it a title up here. So, um, uh, GDP uh, per capita. And if I look at this one, I can, it has this title there. I don't really want that. So what I can do is I can right click here and say hide. So now the title is gone. And finally, I would like to add, break it into two columns. So give it two columns. And I, because it's one layer, I have to give it allow, allow it to split the layers. So now I've got this um, nice um, legend. I might want to, if I want to, you know, work a bit further and out. I want to make sure things are aligned. I can do that by from the top dragging downwards with my mouse depressed. So I can say, okay, I've got a line there. I want to keep. So I go up here and drag down and make sure that's at the bottom of that one. Okay, go from over this side drag in so now we can see I should probably put that down there and I also want to drag in a line there just to make sure that things meet up because now I can uh, insert my title um, so I go to the text box here and I drag where I want my title to be and this is again in uh, uh, GDP uh, for 2016 in USD, something like that. Um, and if you look down in font here, I can, if I click font, I get a dialog box where I can change, change the font, thing like that. But I can also go in, just right click here and then go so I clicked on the arrow. So now I can just increase the font size to something that is appropriate like that. Um, I might also want to insert a, uh, a description text. 
So I just drag in a larger area of text here. Um, on my slides, I had pinched from Wikipedia this text here. So I'll um, pinch that in there and paste this here. Um, and finally, I might want to di display where on the world do we have Europe. So selecting the world map and then scrolling down, I'll just get out of the way to um, the one that is called overlay views and I'll add an overview for my other map. So like that. So now it shows that this red area here, personally, I don't like this layout. So I can click down here and on the symbol say I don't want it to be filled. So no brush on that. I want a fill solid line and I want that solid line to be red. And I probably want it to be a bit thicker. So, and this will make that match. So I'll, I want to give um, this map a frame. So map two here, um, my Europe map. If I um, can get a bit out of my way, find this frame and give it a red frame and a pick wider. So we can see that those two belong together. So now I've more or less produced the map I started with. Um, I hope you like this and um, hope you follow along with yourself. The only thing I now need is I can now save it to either a PDF or a SVG file if I want to work with it in, um, in design or I want to work with it in, in a drawing program or I can make it as a image so I can insert it into a Word document or whatever. So whatever I want of these format, I just choose them. I just make an image of this, call it a PNG file. I decide on the dots per inch. So 300 dpi, that is okay print quality. So I can just say save. And it now has, hopefully in a moment, exported it to a picture file. And I can then click on this one and see that this is my world GDP picture. And uh, here we have our map ready for inserting somewhere. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you stayed on for these 45 minutes. Um, and I hope to see you in another video. Bye.